Today's video is sponsored by my second channel, X2. So many of you guys already know that I do have a second gaming channel, but for those of you who don't, I upload and stream almost every day over there. We actually just had a brand new upload 30 minutes before this video went live over on X2, and we're looking at a brand new Star Wars mod for the game Stellaris. If you're interested, please go check that out, but just generally, thanks for all the support you guys have been showing us over there recently. We are almost at 100,000 subscribers. Hopefully, next month, we'll hit 100k. But anyway, on with the intro. Hey guys, this is Eckhart Slaughter. Hello and welcome to another quick Star Wars Legends lore video. And today we are talking about starfighters and one starfighter in particular, probably the galaxy's heaviest bomber, at least short of a dedicated assault shuttle or gunboat, the K-Wing. The K-Wing was a New Republic starfighter introduced in the Black Fleet Crisis trilogy. Now, the New Republic after the Battle of Endor created a lot of new starfighter and capital ship variants, everything from new Mon Calamari cruisers and X-Wings to brand new ship models like the E-Wing or the Nebula Star Destroyer. The New Republic was really always about fighter carrying and fighter superiority, and that helped drive continual innovation in advanced starfighter design. The E-Wing, which I just mentioned, was a really phenomenal starfighter, as were some of the more advanced X-Wing models, and as was the K-Wing, the topic of discussion for today's video. Take a look at this image. The K-Wing is perhaps the most ludicrously armed starfighter in existence. The K-Wing was obviously a very heavy bomber, meant to replace not only ships like the Y-Wing, but also heavy assault bombers like the B-Wing. Here's a quote describing that from the new Essential Guide to Vehicles and Vessels. As befitting its role in the New Republic fleet, the K-Wing supports an unprecedented arsenal for a vehicle of its size. 18 hard points spread across the three wings allow New Republic engineers to arm the vehicle with a variety of physical weapons including concussion missiles, flechette missiles, sublight torpedoes, thermal warheads, and floating mines. Alongside the expendable high-yield weapons, the K-Wing also had a short-range quad turbolaser turret and a medium-range twin laser cannon, which is also turreted. So while the K-Wing was certainly meant for dealing extreme amounts of damage, ripping through capital ships, destroying enemy fortifications, and whatever else, the ship was also fairly versatile. I mean, turreted weapons on a starfighter in the Star Wars universe are fairly rare, and if you look at the K-Wing, you can see that the turreted weapons actually have a full range of motion, so they can attack enemies from the side or from behind, making them certainly quite a bit less vulnerable than a B-Wing, for example, which is very, very unwieldy. So a nice little bit of design philosophy taken from the Y-Wing, which is probably unsurprising given that both ships are actually made by the same company, Cohen Sayer Manufacturing. That excerpt also hits on the K-Wing's most unique features, and that's 18 hard points across the vessel's three wings, which can be completely customized for a certain mission. If you want your K-Wings attacking ground-based targets, loaded up with different types of bombs and maybe some missiles. In an anti-starfighter role, you probably want some sort of tracking missile, and if you're trying to capture a vessel, ion torpedoes. And I mean, almost all starfighters which carry missiles can swap the missiles out, but the unique thing with the K-Wing is just the sheer degree of adaptability that you have. 18 different hard points gives you a lot of options. The Essential Guide to Vehicles and Vessels also specifically says that because of this versatility, the K-Wing operates pretty well as an escort fighter and even a reconnaissance vehicle. The K-Wing was a large ship, but because of its powerful engines, it could actually achieve the speed of a Y-Wing. Despite being more massive, and a supplementary ion engine actually allowed it to essentially boost, providing it with a lot of extra acceleration when needed. There's a good quote from X-Wing Miniatures about the K-Wing which I think sums up the craft's versatility but also specialized performance. The K-Wing's surprising acceleration, heavy armor plating, and devastating ordnance make it an outstanding ship for hit-and-run operations. And it was a heavily armed bomber that could also double as an escort or reconnaissance vehicle. The SAG edition for the Starships of the Galaxy Guide also explains that there were at least two generations of K-Wings, with the second generation altering the position of the gunner and the turrets. 
The second generation K-Wing was also made even more powerful, as the forward quad laser turret was able to effectively operate as a turbo laser, probably with extra power shunted to the weapon. The K-Wing of course was not without issues though, despite everything good that I've said so far, and there is a reason why the New Republic continued to use Y-Wings and B-Wings. In my opinion, the K-Wing's fatal flaw, and this one is just really, really strange, is that it had no hyperdrive. K-Wings are heavy, multi roll bombers with a slam engine system, you want them being able to launch hit and run attacks on enemy capital ships, especially where they're a bit more durable and have a bit more offensive upside when fighting other starfighters compared to something like a B-Wing. Imagine, you could use old Rebel Alliance tactics and launch a squad of K-Wings and E-Wings at an enemy, use the slam system and the K-Wing's good top speed to attack really quickly, one pass by a Star Destroyer is going to do some significant damage, then just to leave. Admittedly, the New Republic didn't use hit and run tactics as frequently as the Alliance, but the K Wing would be perfect in the role, and it makes no sense to have to tie it to a capital ship. The K Wing also had a high personnel cost. Four individuals were needed to pilot the craft to its full functionality. There's really nothing you can do to counteract that. It's the same thing that happened with ships like the ARC 170. But with that said, although the K Wing might never become the main day to day bomber for the New Republic, it makes a lot of sense to include K Wing squadrons among special forces divisions or elite fleets or wherever else just where you need a little bit more expensive firepower as mentioned at the beginning of today's video the k-wing first appeared in the black fleet crisis as the new republic is modernizing its military with the state of the art fifth fleet in those books the k-wings feature semi-prominently one has a slug thrower loadout which is pretty interesting a starfighter using actual projectile weapons and on another occasion they're described as flying heavy when they've got a lot of high yield weapons. Other than the Black Fleet Crisis, K-Wings never really appear substantially in Star Wars Legends, which is unfortunate because they are a really cool, unique starfighter. I mean, an absurdly heavy bomber with like a modern day ordnance system. Pretty cool. But that's all I've got to say about the A-Wing. Let me know guys what you thought about today's video. Are there any starfighters you'd like to see me cover next? Let me know all of that and more down in the description. Until next time though guys, this has been Eckhart's Ladder. As always, be safe and may the Force be with you.